hilarious. I thought they were funny, okay? But we just don't do that anymore because of cancel culture. Right, wrong, or indifferent. But I'm curious to see where the new Bond film goes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic. I'm going to be... Uh, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. I will say the last several Bond films have been less than stellar. Uh, they've gotten too cerebral. Uh, James Bond should not have mommy issues. Uh, Casino Royale was very good, and they've just just gotten worse and worse and worse each one they've had. I don't blame Daniel Craig for that. I blame the script writers. Maybe this one's different. I hope so. I will see it. But the whole Me Too thing has just taken a lot of fun out of life, a lot of fun out of entertainment, Um, just a lot of fun out of the way we do things. Case in point, Urban Meyer. Now, many of you may not know who Urban Meyer is. Urban Meyer is a football coach. He was uh, a very successful coach at, uh, was it Florida or Florida State? I forget which, but he, he won a championship there and he was a fantastic coach. He then went to Ohio State, had a lot of success there and uh, still loved in Ohio. I mean, he's just a, he's a champion, okay? Retired a couple of years ago because he had health problems. Apparently he got better and was hired by the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's a uh, NFL team owned by uh, Shah Khan, who's a Southern Illinois uh, auto parts maker, billionaire. Uh, And his team is not good. So they're thinking, you know what? We got the first round draft choice and we're going to hire this legendary coach. So maybe, just maybe, we can start winning. Well, this week, Urban Meyer did something that nobody in the NFL ever does. He was caught in a bar doing inappropriate things with a woman who was not his wife. Many of you may have seen the videos. This was in a bar. In fact, this was not in a bar. This was in the bar, the bar of a restaurant. And it was his own restaurant, what, Urban Steakhouse or something like that. It was, it was his restaurant, okay? And the videos that have gone viral on the internet show Urban Meyer, who's pushing 60, and a young gal, I think it was 24, Okay, and this young gal was, uh, uh, Meyer was sitting on a bar stool and the young gal was, uh, with his legs spread apart, the young gal was in front of him gyrating her butt on his genitalia and Meyer was rubbing on her butt with his hand, okay? And the NFL was just shocked. They were embarrassed. This is not the NFL. This is not what we stand for. And word on the street is they're going to fire Urban Meyer. Now, first of all, (laughs) this is nothing new for anybody in the NFL. An NFL player went to a bar and got frisky with somebody who's not his wife. Friends, that's an every night occurrence with somebody in the NFL all the time. But here's the difference. Urban Meyer's the coach, of course. You're supposed to be an example, of course. But the biggest reason why they're criticizing him for this, they owe Urban Meyer a bunch of money for this long-term contract, contract, and he's 0-4. His players have already lost confidence in him. He's He's a flop. He's a dud. He's not doing the job. He's not what they thought he was going to be. So my prediction is they're going to use this I'll call it a lapse of judgment because it's the wrong way to be, okay? But this is what the NFL does. This is what ballplayers do, okay? Right or wrong, in fact, it's wrong. But right or wrong, that's just what they do. If Urban Meyer were 4-0, this would be a done deal. But he's not. He's 0-4. So he's probably going to lose his job, lose his contract on a morals clause. And I'll use morals in air quotes, Okay. Because they just want to get out of the contract. They just don't want to pay him the money. And now the the lady who was gyrating her buttocks against Urban Meyer, uh, she's afraid she's going to get fired. 
because she's on the internet too, and she works for a public relations firm, a marketing firm. Well, the the, the, the dirty little secret is, and I think this is unrelated from everything I can I can tell from the uh, uh, articles I've read. She works for a marketing firm who also works for Myers Restaurant. Okay, but the firm has said, "Look, this is a good gal. We're not going to fire her," and she's upset about it. She's a 24 year old gal who was gyrating herself against a almost 60 year old man. Now, if this guy were the garbage man, she'd have never done it, but it was urban Meyer. Why was this gal gyrating herself against urban Meyer? Because he's a famous guy. Was she gold digging? No, but she wanted to tell all her friends, Oh, look at me and urban Meyer. Oh boy. Okay. So she got her way. And now things are going south, and she's crying, boo-hoo-hoo, look at me. I did this and I did that, but now somebody saw me. Well, you're in a public place. Everybody has a cell phone. You love filming that type of thing. The whole Me Too movement has made her into a victim. And she's not a victim. She's a gal who wanted to get frisky with a married man who's famous. And Meyer is a famous guy who wanted to see what it would be like to get frisky with somebody who's young enough to be his daughter. It's as simple as that. There's no sexism here. There's no me too here. It's very simple. Women have a certain advantage over men. Sometimes men have a certain advantage over women. But attractive women have an advantage over not-so-attractive women. Now, here's where some of you folks, your jaws are going to drop, and you're going to think, what the heck is he saying now? And here's what I mean. Way back when, years ago, when I worked at another company in management, there was uh, there were certain women who dressed a certain way, and some of them were very attractive. Some of them, not so much. So the managers all had a meeting. And by the way, uh, these managers in the meeting, um, half, I think half of them were women. If not half, at least 40% of them were women. So this was not a group, group of men making this decision. And the decision was made, look, if so-and-so and so-and-so dresses this way, nobody cares. But if these other folks dress this way, it's not appropriate. In other words, if the good-looking ladies dressed with a shorter skirt or a plunging neckline, nobody's going to care. In fact, everybody kind of likes it. But if the fugly ones do it, nobody likes it. And the decision was made that you can't tell her you can and her you can't, so nobody could. That's a way. That's a place where the better-looking one has an advantage over the not-so-better-looking one. And don't say this is all a man thing because it's not. Women are more catty than men when it comes to this stuff. I think most of you women, if you're serious or honest, you'd agree with me, okay? Case in point, I'm a big fan of uh, the social media site LinkedIn. LinkedIn, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of like Facebook for business and industry, okay? Uh, it's not so much gossip and silliness and show me pictures of your of your cat, but it's a whole lot of uh, this is our stuff, this is what we do, here's our application, and you and you uh, network with people who are in your field, okay? And I post quite often on my LinkedIn site uh, some of the products that we do and applications and how people in the industry can benefit from our product. It's that type of thing, okay? And LinkedIn, like Facebook you get hits, okay? If you pay a fee, they put you out there more and you get more hits. In other words, more exposure and more um, bang for the buck, okay? And so I pay a premium and I, I get a lot of folks who see my site. And I'm happy with the results I get because I truly believe that what I put out there is helpful to my customers, And hopefully they'll see it, they'll read it, they'll think about it, and come to me for a solution to their problem. 
And that solution is almost always going to include buying something that I sell. That's the way LinkedIn works, okay? And I will get, let's just say, X number of views on my posts. Some more than others. I'm trying to figure out what 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 works and what doesn't, and I'm getting a good idea of that. But there's another lady on LinkedIn, and I'm going to go ahead and mention her name. Her name is Gretchen Filiaw. She's not a young woman, but not an old woman, and a very attractive woman. And she has a company called, I, I don't know what the name is, it's like MadeInUSA.com or something like that. And her thing is, is she goes around to trade shows and businesses and basically just posts pictures of her with stuff and says, yes, Made in USA, we love it. Yes, we love these people. Yes, these people are wonderful. And really, the post says absolutely nothing. It's just saying, hey, I love Billy at Billy's Bolts, okay? And here's a picture of Gretchen with enormous cans, nice legs, in a tight dress, sometimes low cut, smiling in front of Billy from Billy's Bolts. Gretchen's site gets a lot more views than mine does. And it says absolutely nothing. It gives exposure to the people that she's working with, granted, and exposure is exposure. But it doesn't say Billy's Bolts are better because of this. Billy's Bolts are better than Bobby's Bolts because uh, they're this or that. It's just that here we are. I like it. That's it. But more people are looking at her stuff than my stuff. And all she does is, is smile, dress provocatively, be born very attractive, and smile. Friends, I can't do that because nobody wants to see my picture on my LinkedIn page, okay? Because there's nothing for me to see. I'll show my products because my products are better looking than me and people can actually use my products. Now, if it sounds like sour grapes, it's not. I will say that, you know what? She has a arrow in her quiver that I do not have, okay? And she's taking advantage of it. I do not fault her for doing it. I'm not jealous of her. In fact, I'm just saying, look, she can, I can't. Good for her. Congratulations to her, by the way. Because she's able to take advantage of that and get views and do things for her customers. And I have to think she's making a good living at it. Good for her. But I can't do that. I just can't because of what I look like. Now, if you look at the comments on her LinkedIn page, they'll say, oh, such a nice picture. You're beautiful inside and out. Oh, I love the pictures. And you know that a lot of those guys, and it's almost all men who post on her site, by the way, who comment on her site, I should say. You will never say something that says, wow, great cans. But that's what they're thinking. That's the dirty little secret about sexism. That's the dirty little secret about the whole Me Too thing. Because... The whole Me Too thing, it draws a, not black or white, but everything is beige. You can look, but you can't stare. Or maybe you can stare, but don't oogle. Or maybe you can oogle, but don't touch. Or maybe you can touch, but you can't grope. The line has moved. And like I said, if you go right up to the line, if you go right up to the perceived line, you're wonderful. If you go past it, you're sexist and you're canceled. If you don't go up to it, you're obviously gay. Many of you listening to this will say, right on, Strong. You've said it. Nobody else will, and it's absolutely true. Others will say, 
what in God's name is he saying? This guy's off the charts. He's horrible. And again, as I said at the beginning of this essay, my intent is not to hurt anyone.